If you're looking for a safe, reliable, and cost-effective 48-volt lithium iron phosphate battery, then you need to take a look at the new Pites V5. But I want to see if this battery really lives up to its reputation. So in today's video, we're going to be doing a hands-on review, including a teardown of the Pites V5. I want to see how solid the construction is, and is this really a battery that you can rely on for your home's emergency power needs? The smarter way to go solar. All right, now in today's video, we're gonna be doing a hands-on review of the Pites V5 battery. Now this video is for those of you who like 48 volt modular systems. And when I'm talking about 48 volt modular systems, think Solark, uh, think uh, Victron, LuxPower, uh, GrowWatt is another brand some of you guys might be familiar with. But basically where you can piece together your individual system components, you can pick your inverter, you can pick your batteries, in some cases, you might use a third-party charge controller as well uh, to be able to round out the system. Uh, and of course, one of the advantages of these type of systems compared to the all-in-ones is that you get a much lower overall cost per kilowatt hour capacity for the final installed system. But it means that you have to have a little bit more smarts as the system owner or as the system designer to understand how all of these parts and pieces fit together. Now for these type of systems, one of the most popular type of batteries that's emerging is the server rack format batteries. And basically these batteries are built to, to essentially be housed in, slide in a standard computer server rack. I believe this is a 4U size server rack battery. And it allows for more modularity uh, and just ease of man managing the logistics of how to move these batteries around uh, and finally how to get them connected to your inverter system. So if you look at the battery here, uh, of course you've got your positive and negative terminals. These are your, your main battery terminals. You've got your input here for your Wi-Fi dongle. So this will allow you to do over the air firmware updates as well as upload performance data uh, back to the cloud, back to the monitoring platform. So here you have your communication ports for the batteries to communicate with each other or if you need to interface the battery with a PC so you can pull off diagnostic or performance data and crunch those numbers. You've got your dip switches here, and this really allows you to set the communication protocol of the battery. So again, depending on which inverter system you're using, you may have to adjust the communications protocol so the battery and the inverter have that tight closed loop communication. Uh, again, if you're, if you're looking at 48 volt systems, it's gonna work with the top brands like Solar, LuxPower, Victron, and GrowWatt as well. And then of course you have your power switch here. But I gotta tell you guys, I'm, I'm skeptical because with all these batteries coming onto the market, especially at this low price point, I wanna know, are these things really, are they built solid? Are they reliable? Is this something that you can really use uh, in an emergency situation when you have to protect your home's power supply? So we're gonna take it apart and find out. All right, now let's take a peek under the hood. Okay. So now we can see inside the battery appliance. And, and again, a lot of times, guys, we, we call these things batteries. In reality, this is a complete energy storage system. You've got your power packs, which are made of individual battery cells. And then, of course, you have inside here, you have your communications board. You have your battery management system, or BMS, which is basically it's the, com the computer that controls how this entire system works. And then you have your power board as well, which controls how power is distributed here between the various uh, terminals. So this is all that makes up an energy storage system. I wanna see the actual battery cells themselves. So let's go ahead and pop these covers off here. All right, so now we can see the individual battery cells themselves. So this V5 battery, the total capacity is five kilowatt hours of usable energy. And so it's made up of two power packs, two internal power packs. Each power pack is 24 volts. So the, the two in parallel, or sorry, the, the two in series together make for an, a nominal 48 volt system. So if I pull out my multimeter here, I should be showing here 48 volts approximately across the entire system. And I do, I've got 52.7 volts. And if I look at just one module, just one module, I should be showing about half that, which I am, 26.4 volts. And then I can even look at individual battery cells. So in a system like this, again, we should be seeing approximately 3.3 volts on a fully charged system, 3.3 volts per cell. And that's what we're showing here. So one of the first things that jumps out to me here is the FPC, the flexible printed circuit board that's used to collect data from the individual battery cells. 
So if you look here, there are, there are small circuits that hit each individual battery cell so that the BMS can monitor voltage as well as their temperature sensors here as well. So the battery management system is constantly gonna be monitoring voltage and temperature to make sure that those battery stay, cells stay within a healthy range. Otherwise, if it becomes unsafe, they can throttle the current back or they can shut the battery off completely. Okay, so with this system, I can see that each individual battery cell is connected to these sensors, which is collecting voltage data, and for these ones, collecting temperature data as well, which is sent through the flexible printed circuit board. It's all consolidated here, and then all that data is sent via the sampling line back to the BMS. You know, some of the cheaper systems, they have basically just this sampling line here, and then individual cable harnesses and individual connections and solder points for each cell. So this is a much, much cleaner design, less potential points of failure, uh, which is good, because frankly, the reason we're doing this is to see, is this really a reliable product long-term? Now, the other nice thing about this design is that these boards are individually serviceable. So if a board goes bad, which is probably more, most likely what's gonna go bad in this system as opposed to a battery cell itself, so if the BMS board goes bad, for example, that board can be replaced without having to replace the entire, the entire battery appliance. So I like that as well, and they give you some room to work within the, uh, within the enclosure here. You know, and these also appear to be the new high quality automotive prismatic cells, which we're seeing as sort of the current, current state of the art. The other thing I notice here is the high ampacity six gauge wire on the battery terminal here. So with two number six gauge wires, you've got at least 100, 100 amps of ampacity here. So again, as far as for high power output applications, I think you're looking at a really, really solid battery here. All right, so we got everything put back together. Guys, I gotta say, I'm, I'm impressed at the construction on this Pites battery. Uh, now, I should note, this battery is intended for indoor use only. So this is not an outdoor rated battery. It's not a weather resistant battery. It, it needs to be installed in a weather protected location. Uh, but that's pretty much what you're gonna see with all of the server rack style batteries. They're designed to be installed in a server rack, you know, in, in a weather protected environment, whether that's your basement, your garage, but somewhere where it's not gonna have direct exposure uh, to moisture. Now, in terms of warranty, the Pites battery comes with a 10 year warranty. And within those 10 years, you can cycle the battery up to 6,000 times, up to 90% depth of discharge. So very, very long service life on the battery here. And again, my, my impression, guys, is it's a very, very reliable product. Now, I, I know the question that all of you are gonna be asking out there is, okay, Joe, well, how much does it cost? And is it worth it? And I think you guys are gonna be very, very pleased with the price point. So right now, as of this recording, you can buy each five kilowatt hour battery module for between $1,650 and $1,750 a piece. Um, or if you wanna break that down on a price per kilowatt hour basis, it's basically $330 per kilowatt hour. So again, if you compare this with just about any other system out there on the market, especially some of these more expensive all-in-one systems, it's almost impossible to beat this on a price per kilowatt hour basis. Uh, and again, you're getting a state-of-the-art lithium iron phosphate based solution that you can pair with just about any 48 volt nominal inverter. Uh, and of course, it does have all the necessary safety listings. So if you're looking at UL9540 and UL9540A in terms of, of fire safety and thermal runaway, it's got all, all those certifications. Uh, and again, that's the real advantage with the lithium iron phosphate chemistry is it, it's more durable, but it's, it's also safer for indoor use. You know, the first generation of lithium ion batteries, they, they performed very well, but they had that risk of thermal runaway where the batteries could catch on fire. With the LFP batteries, you don't have that risk. They operate at a much cooler temperature, and that's why they're much preferred for indoor use. So folks, I've gotta say, this is a solid product. If I were installing my home system again today, I may use the Pites D5 battery. Um, again, it would give me that LFP chemistry that is the current state of the art. Uh, and of course, I can pair that with my Solar converter, but you don't have to use Solar. If, again, if you're using um, Lux Power, Victron, GrowWatt, you know, any of those 48 volt nominal inverters will work with the Pites V5 battery. Um, folks, if you're looking at where you can purchase this, I'll make sure you get a link uh, on the description down below. Of course, you can go directly to the Pites website. Um, they also are selling this through distribution. So if you're a solar installer out there, you wanna buy in volume, you wanna get wholesale pricing, check with your distributor as well because they're selling at more competitive pricing to solar installers through distribution that way. Well, folks, that pretty much does it for today's video. Uh, by the way, if you're getting good value from these videos that we have on Solar Surge, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. 
Uh, and also go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well if you haven't done so already. That way as we have new videos like this coming out, it'll come up and you can stay up to date with everything. Um, also, we're gonna be doing more videos like this in the future, more hands-on videos where we can actually, you know, somewhat take the product apart and really get, get uh, underneath the hood and share that information with you. Uh, of course, if you're in the process of looking at different solar and battery options for your home, uh, if you need to meet with a contractor or if you need to get a price quote on a solar install for your home, uh, as always, you can feel free to reach out to us on the link below here. You can set up a call with a solar surge expert uh, or just use the free online quote tool so you can see how much solar and battery storage costs in your area. Well, that does it for today's video. I thank you all for spending some more time on the Solar Surge channel. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.